Welcome to Chamber Chat. I'm Judy Taylor, President of the Haversham County Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us. I have an all-star lineup of guests today that include Emily D. Four with Haversham Winery, Bradley Crane with Haversham Little League, and Austin Elliott with Sunburst Farms. So be sure and stay with us. And my first guest is Emily D. Four with Haversham Winery. Welcome, Emily. Thank you, Judy. I'm so glad to have you on. Well, we are pleased to be here and to finally be members of the Habersham Chamber of Commerce. Well, I was delighted that you finally became a member of Habersham Chamber of Commerce because Habersham Winery, we think, should be in Habersham County. And I know, County, and I know we'll get to that we'll later. We'll get to that. Yes. But uh, Habersham Winery is one of the oldest wineries in the state. It Tell is. us a little bit about the history of Habersham Winery. Well, Habersham Winery has been around for 30, well, actually, this year is 31 years. Um, we produced our first wine in 1983. The vineyards in Habersham County, our first original vineyard, Stonepile Vineyard, um, is only about five miles from here, and it was planted in 1979-1980. Um, so Habersham Winery was founded in Habersham County, and that's how we have the name. That is right. And the original winery was located in the city of Baldwin. Um, that's where they built the first winery. They could get a license there to do that. And then when they sort of outgrew that facility, uh, they started looking around. They originally wanted to build a, a winery at our vineyard in Sto at Stonepile. Mm -hmm. Um, but at that time, uh, the county regulations wouldn't allow them to do that. So our owner went looking for other properties and found a, a piece of property south of Helen on the banks of the Chattahoochee, um, about 500 acres there. And it includes Nora Mill and the old Martin House. And so why just build a winery when you can build an entire village? So in the years since then, that started in the late 90s, uh, the new winery facility was built um, and they've moved in old buildings and uh, built other shops and so now it encompasses about 12 retail locations in, in addition to the winery. Uh, two restaurants, lots of retail locations, a zip line, so we have lots of things going on there. Um, so that's how we ended up in White County, was just purely a logistical and, and legal sort of matter. And that makes sense, Emily. Mm -hmm. And it is such a beautiful place there. It's just so picturesque. Well, thank you. So are you saying then that the like Nora's Mill is actually part of your property? It is. It is part of the Nakuchi Village, which okay. Tom purchased that entire property there. Uh -huh. um, so some of the businesses are independently owned and just lease property for him, uh -huh. and um, some of them are his businesses as well. Uh -huh. But they're all part of the Nakuchi Village. Well, tell me, let's talk about your wine now. Okay. Do you have to know a lot about wine and hear some of your bottles? And you know, a lot of people enjoy wine but don't know a lot about what mm -hmm. goes with what and so forth. But do you have to know a lot about wine to enjoy a wine tasting? You do not. We are a very friendly winery and we are very welcoming to all levels of wine knowledge. So if you walk in the door and you've never been to a winery before, we will walk you through a, a tasting, and we offer complimentary tastings every day, seven days a week, and we're open 363 days a year. So, so you're closed Christmas and what other day? Thanksgiving. Okay. Yes, we're open otherwise. So you can walk in anytime, no appointment necessary, uh, and have a complimentary tasting. And one of our staff will walk you through the tasting process. It's not intimidating. Some people are intimidated by the idea of wine tasting mm -hmm. and we try to make it fun and very approachable for everyone. Mm -hmm. And we literally have wines for anyone. So we sell anything from a Muscadine to a Merlot is sort of what I say. We have about 20 wines on our list. Um, so we find that most people, even if they're not big wine drinkers, can find something that they like. Mm -hmm. Well, do you do tours we, of your winery? Well, um, on an everyday basis, when you come into our tasting room, mm -hmm. we have windows uh, that view into the production area. So you can do a self-guided tour and see the actual process, the winemaking and the bottling and the, and the barrel room. So you can see all of that happening on a daily basis. On the weekends, um, through VIP tours, their wine bus, uh, they do a tour of all the wineries. We do a special tour for those guests. So if you want to do a behind the scenes tour, you can sign up for the wine bus mm -hmm. and, uh, and get the behind the scenes tour. That sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. I might sign up for that. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. But let's talk about what events do you participate in? Well, we participate in numerous events throughout the year, all, all sorts of wine tastings and wine events all over, the, all over the Northeast Georgia mountains and down into Atlanta as well. Um, the first weekend in May, every year for 22 years, we've been hosting Wine Fest at our winery. Oh, have you? We do. In May? Okay. In May. So the first Saturday in May every year, we host uh, all the members of the Wine Growers Association of Georgia, and we now 
have 19 winery members. They come to our, our location. Uh, we do tastings and we have special food and music and art, so it's a really fun thing. And so you, you buy glass and you get to go around and taste all the different wines. It's a, it's a great day. Mm -hmm. So that's our, our big event for the year at the winery right now. Well, like, uh, um, you know, a big, you are really right in the border of Helen. We are. Mm -hmm. And Helen has the big Oktoberfest. Yes. So how do you, what do you do? What, how do you participate in Oktoberfest? I guess you're just open. We, we just try to hold on for the ride. <laughs> but but uh, that's a very busy time of the year for us. We um, obviously with the Leaf Lookers and the Oktoberfest, and it's a great time to come to the mountain, so we're very busy during that time. Um, and, and in that same time, at the very end of Oktoberfest, uh, an event that we started last year in cooperation with the, the Chamber of Commerce in, in White County mm -hmm. is the Unicoi Wine Festival. So we have a big wine festival there. Um, at the end of, uh, of Oktoberfest. It's the first Saturday in November. And so the five wineries of White County participate in that. And I think some of those may be members of yours too. Um, and that's another big event that we participate in. And that's at the Hardman Forum, right across the street from our winery. That's interesting too. So yeah. you're, you're, you have more events that, that, right. that I was actually, uh, that, I, that I thought you had. Right. Mm -hmm. That I was aware of. Yeah. And uh, well, uh, Emily, this is just so interesting. You want to talk just a little bit about mm -hmm. the different wines that go with different foods. Can you, can you address that just a little bit? Because what I've always heard is if you're eating beef, you drink like a, oh, a red wine. Right? If you're eating mm -hmm. chicken or fish. Well, there are a lot of complicated rules out there about what you're supposed to do. And, and the general rule is uh, that if you have a food and you drink a wine with it and it makes the wine taste better or it makes the food taste better, then that's a good pairing. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the basic rules are you generally want to drink like a Chardonnay or a white wine with cream sauce pastas or fish or chicken. Um, you want to drink your, your bigger reds like your Merlots and Cabernets with beef and pork and things like that, more red meat. Um, and then your sweeter wines are more dessert wines or what we call porch wines, sipping wines. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there are some rules out there, but we can walk you through the list if you have a particular uh, dinner that you want to try to pair a wine with, we'd be happy to answer that question for you and give you some suggestions. That sounds good, Emily. Mm -hmm. Emily, thank you so much again for becoming a member of Habersham Chamber, mm -hmm. and thank you for being on Chamber Chat. And I and uh, I just look forward to being over there. I'm going to take advantage of some of these Do. tours. Well, I hope you will come to our tour and a tasting with us, and we are so pleased to be members and working with you now, Judy. Thank you. At Windstream, we're offering our customers a new feature, Watch TV Everywhere. Now you can watch available episodes of favorite shows, movies, and live news and sports on tablets, smartphones, and laptops. There's no extra charge from Windstream. You only need to be a cable customer already receiving a win package. It's simple to get started. Just visit WatchTVEverywhere.com. So enjoy, and thanks for being our customer. Thank you for staying with us. My next guest is Bradley Crane with Habersham Little League. Welcome, Bradley. Thank you, Judy. We're very happy to be here. Well, thank you for being here today. And uh, Bradley, let's just start off by talking a little bit about the history and the background of Habersham Little League. All right. When did it start? How old is it? We uh, Habersham Little League started in 1997 here in, in Clarksville, Georgia. Okay, so about what, 17 years old? Yep, getting getting close there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're located on um, Highway 17 outside of Clarksville, right next to the fairgrounds in Clarksville, across from the Aquatic Center. Mm -hmm. um, you'll probably drive by us because we're down in a hole, um, but uh, if you turn around, you come back and find us pretty quick. <laughs> right. You know what I'm always saying is, it's I'm, I'm such an animal lover. I say it's on the way to the animal shelter. That's right. It's just right there. Right. It's on, on the on the other side. On the other side. Yes, yeah, sure is. Of the and we're shelter. part of uh, we're part of a uh, Georgia District Seven, okay. uh, which is uh, Habersham, Stevens, Rabin, Franklin, Madison, and Hart County. About five or six counties. About yeah, it's six six, six counties in in District Seven. Uh -huh. Well, how many children participate in Habersham Little League? We have about 375 children that participate. From in the, Habersham or from the whole district? From Habersham. Wow. From Habersham that participate in, in the Little League program. I believe you have a child. Well, I have two. Two. That okay. actually is in the league here. So I'm getting pulled between coaching two teams, and it's, uh, 
takes up a lot of time, but it, I enjoy it. I really do. Would I there really ever do. be a situation where your two boys would play each other? No, okay. no. The age difference is, uh, it kind of works out to where that doesn't happen. Well, let's talk about the age groups. Okay. Tell our audience about the age groups because what is the range and how does that work? Sure. Uh, we start at age four. Four to six is our T-ball league, and that's male and female. Mm -hmm. And then at age seven and eight, we have a baseball league and a softball league. Nine and 10, we have a baseball league and a softball league. 11 and 12, a baseball league and a softball league. And then it goes all the way from baseball from 13 to 18, we have baseball leagues. Quite a, quite a, a range That's there, right. it really is. And we also offer a, a challenger group, which is a, uh, our special needs kids. So we have a team oh, for that. so good that you work with those children, too. Oh, yeah, they enjoy it. If you ever get a chance to come watch one of their games, mm -hmm. it really will touch you. Oh, to I'm watch sure that. it will. Well, what are the advantages, Brad, of playing Little League? I've always, I've never, I don't have a son. Sure. So I've never uh, had a child to participate in Little League other than, now my daughter was a Little League cheerleader. Okay. A long time ago. She was one. But what are the advantages of Little League, and how does that fit in with the high school programs? Okay. Or the, not high school, but the school programs? Yeah. Um, with Little League, you know, you get to play outside, you know, and you're very active. So you're getting that fresh air. Kids are getting exercise, you know, staying fit. Um, they're not playing video games, watching TV. So they're out there. Uh, and, uh, and it's and, a social. They're, they're yeah, being social. Yeah, right. They are. They're and they're becoming teammates for people, mm -hmm. developing lifelong friends, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and learning to be a team player. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that you have to be a team player to play this sport, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter any any kid's ability; they can play the game. Oh, really? They sure can. Okay. It's so all children get to participate. That's right. Okay. They sure do. It's not like just. You, it's not as if just the better ones get to go right. out there. Right. No, everyone gets to play. Okay. Well, everyone that's, that's good to know. Yeah. That is. But, uh, well, tell us, how does it fit in with school sports? Is it just that you all are grooming kids for school po sports? or? Yeah, we're trying to uh, develop because these are going to be future Raiders. They are. They're going to be future uh, Lady Raider softball players and mm -hmm. future Raider baseball players. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to develop them to learn the game fundamentally mm -hmm. to be able to go to that next level. So you are kind of like the theater program. We are. You're the theater program for the maybe middle school we sports. Are. And mm -hmm. then they, if they want to continue in sports, they can get into the, the school sports. Sure can. Sure can. They, uh, we groom them up till, till they leave us right. in middle school now and in high school. And without that theater program, a school program cannot be very successful. That's I know right. That. That's right. And we've had many that have started in our program that are actually now playing in the collegiate level. Okay. Playing in Piedmont, uh, Tallulah Falls, Truett McConnell, and other I places. I would not doubt that Tavares King started in your program. I'm sure that he did. He probably I'm sure did. that he did. <laughs> uh, well, you do a lot of good things. Uh, I know Little League does. You all had an Austin Sprayberry Day. And tell our audience first who Austin Sprayberry was and what happened and about the day. Sure. Austin Sp Sprayberry, is, uh, he was a member of our league. Um, he developed leukemia. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few months ago, he did pass away. Mm -hmm. But before that happened, this spring, we have uh, the board of directors for Little League decided to have every spring an official Austin Sprayberry Day. Mm -hmm. And all money will go to the Austin Sprayberry Fund. That is great. And this, this past spring, we raised $9,500 on one Saturday. Wow. That's solid auction, dunking booth, mm -hmm. concessions, mm -hmm. and all that money went to that fund. That's good. Well, uh, I understand that you have an annual meeting coming up, so the Little League has an annual meeting. We sure do. Well, tell we us sure about do. That. Our annual meeting will be on um, Saturday, uh, sorry, Sunday, September 28th from two to three at the Aquatic Center in Clarksville. And what this annual meeting does, it elects your new board members for the following year. Um, we're gonna develop uh, our constitution for the next coming up year. And um, any member of the league that's in good standing with the league that has passed 
uh, the required background check, which uh, includes coaches, assistant coaches, team moms, any volunteer that did a, a background check is welcome to attend and be able to vote. Very, very good. Yeah. Well, Bradley, thank you for being on Chamber Chat today. You were wearing two hats today. That's right. You are a board member for Habersham Little League. Yes, ma'am. You're also a board member for the Habersham County Chamber of Commerce. Yes, ma'am. You're a busy man in the community. You're involved. You're engaged in our community, and we appreciate what you do. Thank you so much for having us and letting us be here. And also, I wanted to thank the Northeast Georgian for the coverage that they have given us over the year. That's a good thing because they really do give they you do. a lot of coverage. Thank right. you again. Thank Randy. you. Thank you for uh, being with us. And we're, please stay with us. We're going to take a short commercial break, and we will be right back with our last guest. Don't look at me. Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Aww. <laughs> you should pick that up. <laughs> oh, you're such a dork. Loser. Here, let me help you with that. Oops. <laughs> Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look. Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. <laughs> they want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one. Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Thank you for staying with us. Our last guest today is Austin Elliott with Sunburst Stables. And Sunburst Stables is one of the best kept jewels in Habersham County. It attracts many visitors here every year. Welcome, Austin. Thank you, Judy. This is actually our second time um, on uh, the show. On the Chamber Chats. Mm -hmm. Your mother was here before. Yes, yeah. And Austin, you, your parents own Sunburst Stables. Mm -hmm. And you've grown up there, though. Yeah, uh, I've spent, uh, ever since I was born, on the property, um, so we've never moved or anything like that. We've always stand, uh, stayed really close. So you're very familiar with everything that yeah. goes on, and I believe when you're not in school, you're working there mm -hmm. on the property all of the time. Well, for our audience that doesn't know about Sunburst, because this goes into several counties, tell our view viewing audience exactly what you do at Sunburst Stables. Well, we have a wide range of activities, all the way from horseback riding to um, anything as recreational as uh, ATV riding. We also do flyboarding and zip lines, and we also have a summer camp that goes on. Um, and then those are just a couple of the things we do. We also do boating trips, and um, we work with a couple other businesses in Helen. Yes, and, and you just attract, all summer long, you attract a lot of visitors mm -hmm. there. Are you open the year round, or do you close during the winter time? Uh, we're open year round. Um, it honestly depends on how many people are coming. When it snows, usually people are stuck at home and can't really make it to us. But if you have uh, people come, then we can take them. Okay. So you do zip lining all year long? Mm-hmm. All year long. Well, uh, tell, uh, tell, tell our audience this. What, are your age, what is your age range for zip lining? Do you take, how old do you have to be? Um, we, we don't put a limit on age. Uh, it's actually just the weight. Um, we can take all the way from 50 pounds to 250 pounds. Okay. So if we're looking for somebody 100 years old to take, just so we're able to brag about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, my goodness, I hope you find that person. Mm -hmm. But I know some people in their 80s who have gone up there mm -hmm. and zip lined. Yep. Um, it's completely hands-free, so they don't have to do anything. So kids are fine on it, uh, as, um, as well as special needs don't have to do anything um, to the older people that want to go and have a good time. Well, let's tell our audience where you're located. You're, you are in Habersham County. Yes, uh, we are nine miles outside of Helen. Um, we... Well, going from here, from, let's just say going from Habersham County, uh, from uh, Clarksville or Cornelia, most times I go up Highway 197. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, to it takes school. Yeah, it takes about 15 minutes to 20 minutes to get from uh, any point in Habersham to us. We're on kind of the edge, so it's a little difficult to find it first, but once you find it, you'll be happy you right. did. If you can find Batesville, mm -hmm. you can find yeah. Sunburst Stables. And uh, uh, your Sunburst Stables, and that lets everybody know that you do have horses, but you've actually gotten more into some other yeah, things. Yeah, we um, started with horses uh, when we started, and then later on, about 10 years after we started doing horseback rides, we decided to open up to zip lines, and after that we've added a whole bunch of activities just from the, um, the pour in from people that uh, come to the zip lines that like it so much. Well, tell us about your horses. Do you have horses that 
that are very gentle that go all the way from being gentle to maybe being a challenge or what? Mm -hmm. Your horses are gentle? Uh, the majority of our horses are, as we call, bomb proof. So if um, something happens, they're not going to throw you off or anything like that. Um, we use all of our horses for our kids' camp. And so uh, we have kids that are eight years old that ride all of our horses. And they're very, very safe. Um, we have not had an accident in a very, very, very long time. Well, I've been up there, and I've seen your horses. And, and uh, they, they appear very gentle. Mm -hmm. They appear in very good shape. And you have a lot of horses. Yeah, we do. Right now we have 36 horses. Um, amazing. We have paints and quarter horses and any other kind of look that you're looking for to ride. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about, you had, you added some new features up there this year. Yeah. And some that I have no idea what, what you do. Uh, let's talk about some of the new features you added this year. Well, we have two new things this year. We have the ATV tours, which is a lot of fun. It's uh, beginner level, but it's not so beginner that if you've ridden an ATV before, it's not interesting. So it keeps you interested, but it adds a little bit of challenge as you go. Um, they're all very safe. Uh, we have two guides on every single tour, whether you have two people or eight people come. We always have two guides with you to make sure that you're having um, the best experience you can have. And then we also have the flyboard. what age groups do you, what age range do you have on the ATV? Well, you have to be 12 to drive your own, okay. but we can take uh, double riders on the ATVs. So if you want to put a five-year-old behind you, that's okay with us. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, and another thing that you have new this year mm -hmm. that I have no idea what it is, is flyboarding. Mm -hmm. uh, the flyboard. The flyboard is really cool. Not a whole bunch of people know what it is. It attaches to your feet and um, is hooked up to a jet ski. And what it does is it's a water sport. And when you're in a pond or a lake, you can throttle the jet ski and it pushes you into the air. And you can hover about 10, 15 feet in the air and fly around um, propelled by water. And it's kind of like having a jetpack on your feet. It's really difficult to explain, but it's really awesome if you ever get to see it. So if somebody wants to do that, they can go up there, and you all provide the boat and pull them. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, we have a facility. Do you ever drive the boat? Oh yeah, all the time. <laughs> um, we have a facility on the property that's a pond, and you are able to. Um, it's 30-minute sessions, and so after 30 minutes, you're already beat. But it's very easy. It takes about five minutes to get up. If you come, I can guarantee to get you up in five minutes. Um, and it's not as difficult as it looks. And if you ever get to watch or see or try it, I definitely um, would advise doing that. It's an experience like nothing of it. It sounds like it. It sounds yeah. very, very interesting. So you all, let's just kind of summarize it here, mm -hmm. Austin. You have, of course, your horseback riding. Mm -hmm. You have summer camps yes. that are overnight camps. Mm -hmm. You have flyboarding. You have ATVs. Uh, the boating trip. The boating trip. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, so that is really an entertainment place there. Pe we have people come up all the time just asking what we have, and they end up doing two or three activities in a day just to make a day out of coming up. Well, let's tell our audience how they can get in touch with Sunburst Stables if they want to call and make a reservation. Mm -hmm. Give the, our audience the telephone number. 706-499-499. Um, 8465. Okay, 706-499-8465. 8465. 8465. And I know you have a website. Do you know mm -hmm. what it is? Sunburststables.com, okay. which will get you right to it. And you can search it on Google and it comes up uh, right up for you. Austin, thank you for being on Chamber Chat. And I understand you'll be a senior this year yes, at Eversham Central High School. Mm -hmm. And I just wish you the best. Thank you very much, Judy. And Thank you for staying with us, and I usually end with a quote, and my quote today is inspired by Habersham Little League and the benefit of sports, and it is by Michael Phelps, the Olympic gold medalist, and this is his quote, you can't put a limit on anything. The more you dream, the further you get. Thank you for being with us, and I'll see you next time.